from Alto Plano, above Lago Verde. This is the Starship Vlog 008. I'm Buckfield. Box section 121, the relationships among portfolios, programs, and projects. A best practice for managing the successful accomplishment of strategic objectives is to collect the things which help accomplish those objectives somewhere so they can be coordinated. We call these collections portfolios, and they're a tool to manage things as a group for success in making long-term objectives happen. In business, top-level portfolios are dedicated to achieving profits and fostering innovation. In government, such portfolios are dedicated to health, defense, and education. In starships, top-level portfolios include fundraising and physics research, both long-term objectives for our community. Kelvin Long, co-founder of Project Icarus and general genius in interstellar flight, has pointed out, I can't go forward without at least talking about Star Trek and uh, breakthrough propulsion physics. The characters in science fiction naturally address questions about changes in the future, such as what happens after we solve our current mysteries in physics and develop new capabilities. How will the future be changed? Its mission is a success. History will be irrevocably changed. This timeline will cease to exist and a new future will have been created. The irrevocable change of greatest concrete value towards successful interstellar flight could be discovering physics that would help enable Star Trek-like warp drive, but this will be incredibly difficult, expensive, and complex. The good news is that project management standards explain how efforts with that sort of complexity can be successfully executed, starting with a portfolio dedicated to our strategic goal, a vision of warp drive. We can think of a portfolio like a binder holding all the work related to successfully developing such technologies. To accomplish a warp drive strategic goal, we need sub-portfolios guided by our strategic priorities and responding to progressive elaboration discussed in episode 007. Depending on how they are governed, these sub-portfolios probably will include management and administration of cross-disciplinary research and math projects developing new geometric and topological tools with which we might more consistently model fundamental physics. We also need to make sure they respond to changes elsewhere that might impact them. We can expect parts of such a big project to get killed because things will happen that make those parts wasteful or unwise. Now, there are two kinds of information we need from any subcomponent in this administrative framework. Reports that tell us if our progress toward warp enabling models is on track and whether our progress impacts other stuff. If we manage these well enough, we can deliver our results well, on schedule and within our budget. A warp drive portfolio also contains projects, which we defined in episode 006. The same kinds of information are used here for control and feedback. We will review the formal definition of programs in a later episode, but these are another possible component of a strategic portfolio. The information we collect from each of these areas is the same because this information is exactly what is needed for all successful administration and management. Wherever they are located, individual projects are still considered part of the main portfolio, even when they don't directly interact. And as we see here, the organizational structures can get pretty complicated. But if we're doing something that complex, we have to manage all these relationships or failure is pretty much guaranteed. If we were developing this ship, a project on torpedo controls and a project for installing the torpedo launchers would both be in the sub-portfolio for weapons. But the success of these two is not directly linked. We need those performance reports to get an idea of how we're doing as work proceeds. If something in the weapons portfolio requires changes elsewhere, that needs to be communicated up the organization, and in the first motion picture, a failure to do that was portrayed beautifully. Wormhole. Stand by on phasers. No! Delay that phaser order! The weapons redesign of the Enterprise 1701 to 1701A impacted propulsion. Sir, the Enterprise redesign increases phaser power by channeling it through the main engines. If this had been a real project, here's where these reports on that kind of change would have been communicated. The catastrophic failure of Apollo 13 is a real world example of this, where a change in voltage was made to the command and service module, but not reported to what would be another area of this schematic. A cryotank exploded and the entire crew nearly died. The same failure cost us the Challenger and her crew. The same type of failure cost us the Columbia and even the Titanic. 
Most of the time, lives are not depending on our project management communications, but the success of the project does. While rigorous project management often seems like expensive overhead that produces nothing of tangible value, it is vital that we understand these tools and techniques and use them to prevent failures that range from simply going over budget to major disasters. To succeed, we must follow the rules of success like effectively managing the relationships between portfolios, programs, and projects. Here's some upcoming events on the Starship calendar we might want to check out. If you appreciate this vlog, please click like and subscribe. And if you have an opinion, I'd love to hear from you. Our Starship Pop Culture of the Week is from Universal Studios 2012 movie Battleship, where the habitable zones around other stars are explained with beautiful graphics. Thanks for watching. It's too far away from its sun, it's too cold. If it's too close to its sun, it's too hot. But for an Earth-like planet, the distance is just right. Potentially perfect. Visions of the, the future will be irrevocably changed.